What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Lord Solo Prime, and I'm here to give you guys my updated Inferno at Bill for June 2016. Uh, with that being said, guys, I will not be in attendance for the North American qualifier this year. I got my Yu-Gi-Oh! season started out pretty, pretty late. Uh, so none of my teammates, nor me, nor my brother, will be at the WCQ this year. Uh, but we will be in full attendance, uh, going to uh, regionals, and going to ARG's next uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! season, so be on the lookout for that. That's me. That's going to be more content on this channel. Uh, we'll be playing Inferno X next format, or next season, however you want to say it, because there are a couple of cards that are getting released soon that are going to push this deck uh, exactly where this deck needs to be. Uh, I, I still feel like Inferno X are highly uh, competitive uh, in today's meta and it are going to be relevant for, relevant for next season, so... Uh, that's why I'm uh, coming to you guys and let you guys know what I'm actually going to be playing ahead of time so you guys can follow what I'm going to be doing or let your friends know if they need uh, an Inferno deck they need to reference, they can reference mine. Uh, with, that be, with that being said, I know on my last deck profile with the card guys, uh, somebody in the comment section wants to know what I actually had on my side deck, so we're going to actually cover that. And I did do some tinkering around with my extra deck, so we're going to cover that. So let's go ahead and get into it so we can get to those good things. And let's do it, man. So as you guys may know, I played a Void Imagination build, uh, which consists of me playing two uh, Infernoid Anukus and two Deviatis. Uh, these are the requirements to actually resolve Void Imagination. So you need to play uh, two and two of the, these guys. And from that point on, it's kind of standard uh, with the two, with the triple uh, Dental and the triple Seatsimus. Uh, which is the best Infernoid thus far, depending on the situation, of course. Uh, but uh, pound for pound, Seatsum is just the best one overall. Of course, we played the standard three Petrullias, three Harmonics, uh, the double Petrullia. Uh, the Petrullia is not as good as it used to be, but it does still answer certain boards like Dante's and Beatrice and things like that. But it's not as relevant as it used to be uh for the last monsters i play it is three decatrons now in my last deck profile with the card guys i actually was playing one dark position to chaos and i ended up cutting that guy at the intense intense testing guys uh, i'm not saying that playing dark position to chaos is a bad move but uh please let me explain to you why i actually cut that card uh in testing uh, with my friends, you know, I would resolve reasoning or monstigate, and I would, you know, land on Dark Magician of the Chaos. He would come to the board, blah, blah, blah. But since, you know, me and my friends test for uh, consistency and relevancy, you know, there are times where we just might just overlook a play. So when I would run into Dark Magician of the Chaos off of reason or monstigate, I would continue to mill as if he wasn't there. Just to see how long or how much of more of a meal I would get out of that reason or and on Monster Gate. And I would find myself going extremely deep into my deck uh, to actually I hit a stopping point of a Decatron or things like that. So I would go really, really deep into the deck. And that's really what you want to do when you're playing an Inferno deck with a low normal sum account, guys. So I cut my normal summons down to three. So that means I really want to go deep into that into my deck whenever I resolve a reasoning and on Monster Gate, especially if you're coming off a left home offering where you have to banish two cards from your hand. You want to be able to go so deep into your deck to the point where you're able to able to OTK your opponent that turn. And seeing as, you know, not saying you can't OTK with Dark Magician the Chaos or running into him or anything like that, but, you know, stopping that Dark Magician the Chaos versus putting, what, five more Infernoids in the graveyard is way better. I'd rather take the Infernoids over uh, Dark Magician the Chaos any day. So I hope that, I uh, hope you guys understood what I was trying to convey, but uh, that's my reasoning for our playing just three normal assignments in the form of three Decatrons. Moving on to the spells, we played two Void Imaginations. Uh, I was originally playing three, but you know, you can't really guarantee your opponent is going to have a extra dead monster on the board for you to resolve this card. So I decided to cut this card down to two, seeing as, you know, there are decks out there that say, oh, I play brilliant, um, brilliant Cosmos or brilliant XYZ, um, 
monarchs and things like that. But there's no guarantee that those decks are actually gonna uh, commit to actually keeping the extra dead monster on board. And you already know that this card is just dead against um, what is that domain monarch? So I didn't. I've seen a bunch of domain monarchs in my life, so I just cut this down to two to um, just be more relevant with the times. So, but this card is searchable by left on offering, so you're not totally dead in the water, like you're not ever gonna see this card. But I just wanted to cut this card down to two, which has been absolutely good at two, just as good as it's been at three. So just cutting it down for more relevancy is just the key here. Of course, we play the one reasoning and the one monster gate. You guys already know about those. Uh, left arm offering to search reasoning monster gate or left arm offering. The one of I play one burial, one rent kindling, and one one for one. Uh, these two cards here are just going to get you your deck of trons back from the graveyard or out the deck. Uh, you guys should be familiar with those cards. Uh, I play the one regeki and still playing the two scapegoats. Uh, the scapegoats are here for protection as well as using the scapegoats for your inferno effects, whether it's the Nuku, Divide. Or any other other inferno is allowing you to DD crow on your opponent's turn or things like that. And in some cases, you actually can use the tokens to actually synchro it with the uh, Decatron guys, depending on what the situation called for. So there's that factor. Uh, moving forward, we play one Void Purification. Uh, I know a lot of people might not know what this card does, or might know what it does, and just haven't thought about it in the context of why I'm playing it. So I'm going to read this card out to you guys. First of all, it's a continuous track card, and it states, if you control a monster that is not an Inferno monster, send this card to the graveyard. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. So it has two effects. The first effect is, during each of your opponent's standby phase, you can target one Inferno monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Uh, the card you would like to add from your graveyard to your hand, from, uh, as you know, going off Inferno at bases or anything like that, it's going to be typically Decatron, but this also can correct your Void Imagination requirements. Uh, you can add back your Nuku, you can add back your uh, Divide or things like that to fulfill the requirements to activate Void um, Imagination. But typically what you use this for is to add back Decatron to continuously uh, loop Decatron's effect to actually provide some kind of a slow meal to the graveyard. Uh, slow control mill like that to fill up your graveyard to actually use. And the second effect of this card is during each of your standby phases, you can target one of your banished Inferno monsters and return it to the graveyard, uh, which is really, really huge with uh, the interaction with this card with um, what is that? Left on offering. Let's just say you have to resolve left on offering by banishing a couple of Infernoids from your hand. Um, Prior turns before, I mean, after you pull into uh, Void Purification, what allows you to put those cards you have to give up for left on offering back in your graveyard and can potentially, you can add them back to your hand. So this card is really, really huge. I like this card's interaction with um, left on offering and as a whole in general, uh, being able to add back Decatrons or, you know, just put cards back where they're supposed to be, you know to push your deck even further. Moving on with the traps, we play uh, Triple Drawn and Mirror Force. And if you guys are familiar with my last deck profile with the card guys, you guys already know um, I play this card because there are times where you will only have a Nuku or you will only have Divide or just any Inferno on board and you have to use it uh, to stop a Norden play or Instafusion play, or you have to use a Nuku or Divide to stop a spell, trap, or monster effect, and your opponent would just kind of unload on you and try to attempt to attack you for game, where this is where this card allows you to punish your uh, opponent for you to uh, take advantage of not having any cards on board because you have to trigger your Infernoids for their effect. So you would basically be left with no monsters on board. So this allows you to uh, punish your opponent for thinking you don't have anything that's... Um, threat worthy in the back row uh, when you're going against Cosmos and this card is just absolutely huge against Cosmos, Monarchs and even um, any kind of pendulum based deck. So this card is just really really good guys. And uh, I feel like Inferno has take advantage of it the most uh, out of most decks. Uh, for the last two cards we play 
two Needle Bug Nest, which I was really not trying to play this card anymore. Uh, I haven't played this card since my beginning days of playing Infernoids, but seeing as I needed more ways to actually mill in this deck, seeing as, you know, reasoning went down to one and such and such, I just needed more milling, and this card kind of fits the bill. I didn't want to go the uh, Charge of the Light Brigade and the Raiden um, route because of the normal summons and things like that, so I decided to play Needle Bug Nest, which has been working out really, really good. So let's move on to this... Uh, Extra deck, and then we'll move on to the side. All right, for the extra deck, we play two Inferno Tierra, which you guys might already know for the Void of Imagination. Uh, one Black Rose, one Meteor Burst, one Scrap Archfiend, one Crimson Blader, one Suffering Lord Omega, and uh, something new I'm actually playing. It is the Utopia, and Utopia Prime, and Utopia Lightning. Um, it didn't dawn on me that we actually can make this quite fluently. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you can make Cyframe Lord Omega, you can actually make this. And there were a few times where I was making Cyframe Lord Omega, and I was like, dang, I could have made Utopia, Utopia Prime, and Lightning to actually have a better combatant against, uh, what's that, Cosmo. So I decided to cut the spiders that I was playing in my last deck profile which you guys can see on the Car Guys channel. I hate to keep referencing it, but that was the last time I made a video as far as Inferno it. So just go over there and check that uh, deck profile out. But I hate to keep referencing it, but yeah. So I didn't realize that we can make, you know, level four, I mean, level eight synchros, you know, factoring in over into uh, rank four exceed. So I decided to play uh, 39 just to combat against the meta as of just Cosmos and things like that. Uh, but I think it's a really, really strong choice that I chose to uh, make that by cutting the spiders. Because this is all around better than those uh, big spiders. Uh, of course, returning is Gem Knight Pearl. I wasn't playing him before, but he's back now. Uh, I play the one Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon and the one Draco Sack. If you guys want to know the Absolute Odd Eyes OTK with the Dantu for Infernoids, just go and reference the deck profile I did with the card guys, and, this, and I'll show you that whole combo. Uh, moving forward, we play one uh, number 23 for the rank eights, one Sun Dragon, and one Hope Harbinger, number 38. And this card is absolutely good. Um, typically, when you going against, uh, what is that, Pepe, ending the board with Hope Harbinger and Anuku, it kind of instantly spells game out for those guys, man. Just being able to negate two spell cards in one turn, that's just, just too insane. But uh, I love that card in his, in, with his uh, interaction with uh, next to Anuku or even next to Divide. is really, really strong. So I love that. Moving on to this side deck, uh, we play two. End of Anubis. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you should go know last year at the WCQ, I was playing um, End of Anubis, you know, shutting off cards like the Necros Mirror in the Grave, as well as combating against any uh, BA decks at that event. And it was really, really strong. So it's back to do that same job uh, with uh, destroying BAs and locking out your Monarch players from pantheism or either the prime of the monarchs guys so that's what he's there for even the little squire guys gets wrecked by this guy so moving forward we played two uh trap eaters which i was wanted to test at the last wcq but i ended up playing genzo in its place but going forward for this season and next season i'm going to be playing trap eater because of the clee decks that like to run those traps like they try to lock you out which is uh like Imperial Iron Wall and, you know, just any kind of continuous track cards. And to any certain extent that any deck that can um, play anti-spell fragrance against you will play anti-spell fragrance against you. Seeing as, you know, you run quite a bit of spells. So being able to have a, a monster out to anti-spell fragrance is going to be good. And the fact that he's a tuner is really, really good. And also a key factor of why I want, why I want to play this guy was if you come into contact with your reasoning and or monster gate before... You draw this card, this guy will not mess up your reasoning and on Monster Gate. So you're able to continue with your uh, initial plays of what the deck's supposed to do without being hindered by a side deck card. So for the decks that play an overabundance of an extra deck uh, support, we play the third Void Imagination in the side. Of course, we play the two Twin Twisters, the two Anti-Spell Fragrances, the two 
uh, fiend comedians. Now I side fiend comedian in when I absolutely have to side out my main boarded void imaginations, and that's typically against decks like monarchs, domain monarchs, and cosmos. Where I know I'm not gonna need my extra deck, or they're not gonna use their extra deck or anything like that. So I I side those cards out just to side a fiend comedian, which uh, <laughs> this card can actually wreck. Um, what's that monarchs to a certain degree? Uh, it can either hurt them or push you forward, but either way, you're winning. Either way, guys. Uh, we played a two master restrict. I got to get that second one. Uh, of course, this card is really, really good. And we played the two uh, Robert the Warlords. Uh, we're all playing Fiends, even down to uh, what is that? Uh, even down to these two monsters right here. They're all Fiends, too. So it's, there's basically. Uh, uh, there you go right there. It's just basically it's all fiends in this deck. Whether it's, you know, it's the Infernoids or it's my side deck choices of monsters, they're all fiends. So you're good to go. Um, as you know, Rod Woolworths is one of the best card, best lockout cards, as well as goals and match uh, for this format and for formats to come, guys. Rod Woolworths is pretty good. But you are guys are already sure know that. So that's been my deck profile, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, of course, the side deck will change uh, depending on what's going on but of course you know the things that won't change is probably uh the end of anubis and you know the really good floodgate cards like anti-spell fragrance and stuff like that master restraint but yeah that's been the deck profile guys hope you guys enjoyed it uh like i said this is still a working process and i still do think uh inferno is a highly highly relevant for next format as well as this format guys hope i didn't hit the camera but whatever this video is over so guys just comment like subscribe and uh click some ads if you see them it helps me uh put forth the effort to doing more videos but of course uh we'll be not be going to the wcq but next year we will be in full attendance in front of unique alliance so just keep that in mind guys it has been your boy lord solar prime and i'm out guys peace